It's This Week in Bourbon, sharing the most buzzworthy and clickbait articles coming from Bourbon World. And here's your headlines for November 19th, 2021. Buffalo Trace announces that it will be dropping the Junior from Stag Junior. Drizzly shares the data collected for gift-giving whiskeys. And Old Elk Infinity Blend is the best blend, he says, that master distiller Greg Metz has ever created. But before we get started, here's a quick word from our partners. From their bar to yours, Chad and Sarah of the popular YouTube channel It's Bourbon Night bring you their favorite at-home old-fashioned mix with the new Elemental Elixir's Golden Hour Syrup. It's a custom-made syrup with notes of bold black tea, warm spices, and orange zest. All you need is your favorite whiskey and ice. No bitters needed. One bottle makes 16 drinks, so that's only $1 cocktail before you add your own whiskey. They can also be enjoyed in other cocktails or spirits, mocktails, coffee, tea, and anything you can think of. It's crafted locally in Lexington, Kentucky, and you can get your bottle now at whiskeyambitions.com. Do you ever pour yourself a bourbon, swirl it around, and then start struggling to come up with tasting notes? And perhaps you're also looking for a good Father's Day gift idea. Well, you can now solve both with a kit from Nose Your Bourbon. And unlike other nosing kits on the market, Nose Your Bourbon kits feature real ingredients for the most authentic aromas. You can smell real Tahitian vanilla bean instead of some synthetic aroma that's just made from chemicals. So head on over to NoseYourBourbon.com and enter code BP10 for 10% off your order. Always find what you love at Total Wine & More. With so many great bottles to choose from at the lowest price, it's easy to find your favorite Cabernet or a new single barrel bourbon to try with some help from one of their friendly guides. And with every bottle comes the confidence of knowing you just found something amazing. With the lowest prices for over 30 years, find what you love and love what you find only at Total Wine & More. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly and be 21. Ed Bly and Rising Tide Spirits are back again with a new release of Old Stubborn Bourbon. And this release of Old Stubborn is a premium hand marriage of 10, 11, and 12-year cask drink, barely filtered pot still bourbon. It comes in at a staggering 123.8 proof. And the flavoring grain for this one, which the last one was weeded, but this time it's now rye. Rich, sweet, and bold with a long finish that's sure to be another eye-opener. You can order online at Sealbox or TheBourbonConcierge.com, and you can even purchase in person at Revival Vintage Spirits, and even now with very few select stores in Kentucky. You can get it now while you can, but be sure to do it because it's not going to last long. Welcome, everybody. It's another edition of This Week in Bourbon by Bourbon Pursuit, and we've got a lot of good news, and you know, Ryan, I think it's it's every week uh, we start looking at all the news that's come up, and, and I'm just I'm just surprised by by how much is is coming out. But I I have a feeling we're coming towards the end of the year, and these episodes are going to get a little bit shorter because this is about the time of the year everybody starts taking a break and, and winding down. Yeah, especially marketing and PR people, they're like <clears throat> they're like ah eh, holidays. I'm just gonna take some creative time or something. <laughs> it's, 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 mental, mental health, health breaks. breaks. Mental yeah. health breaks. But I mean, it's true. Like I, I work in the corporate world and right after Thanksgiving's over, you start having these sporadic weeks where you just can't get a hold of anybody until the start of 2022. That's just the nature of what it is. Everybody starts banking all of their vacation and just using it up at the end of the it's year. It's like Derby week here for like two weeks. Nothing's getting done in the city of Louisville because everybody's like going to the track or I'm planning to go to the track or I'm planning a party or I'm doing this or that same as. Uh, that probably doesn't relate. I don't know, but you, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it Derby is kind of like a festive holiday around here. That's that's what it is. But the the weather would make it feel a lot different. But it's true. Like when Derby comes around, you've got uh, a few weeks leading up to it where everybody's busy, everybody's crazy. You got all these festivals and events and everything to kind of go to. And then after it's over, it's all right. Back to the grind. Back to the real it's, world. That's let's exactly get on how conference calls again and do some PR. <laughs> let's let's, More let's zooms. create some news so podcasters can talk about us. <laughs> well, I mean, it's got to be true. It's it's like it's like you can't come out with new labels towards the end of the year. You're not going to come out with new releases because this is the time when you're going to get sort of trapped in that holiday lull where there's 
going to be a rush of people are going to say like, go and buy my new thing for Christmas. But this is usually the time you have all those gimmicks and, and I would say gimmicks, but those sort of ancillary things around bourbon. It's like, what do you give to gift somebody in bourbon that's not a bottle? And so a lot of those start seeing a lot of PR and everything like that. But when it comes to new labels and other bourbon news, now you're, you're I don't think, I don't think we're going to see too much, but we do have a good fair amount to, to kind of go through tonight. Yeah. Let's get to it. Let's do it. So our first headline, what we just kind of talked about, was Buffalo Trace announcing that it will be dropping the word junior from its highly sought after brand called Stag Junior. Now, I know this came out, I think, a week or so ago, maybe it was a little bit longer than that, but I sort of held out on releasing this because I am not one of those people that see something happen or go through the TTB and says, we got to report on this because anything that comes to the TTB doesn't actually mean it's news or it's going to change. Sometimes you could be submitting a label and that's not going to come to fruition for who knows, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. It's as soon as you submit a label, it means nothing but government approval. It doesn't mean that there's going to be any marketing effort behind it, but this will, uh, it was announced that that will actually start dropping junior starting with batch 18 and they are currently on batch 17. And so this is of course, 18 will be released in the new future, which means the official change will happen sometime between early to mid 2022. So Stag Jr. actually got its name because it was essentially the less mature, more rambunctious version of its distilleries, more ever highly sought after, but not in this year's antique collection, George T. Stag. And Stag Jr. was simply a name that was tongue in cheek, by the way, for the distillery to acknowledge that bottles of Stag Jr. were just a merely eight to nine years old rather than its extra mature 15 to 19 years that were common with George T. Stag. They stay in the news somehow, <laughs> don't they? Yeah, is this... Uh... Like, it's amazing that this is news. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to understand. So why are they dropping the junior? So how are they differentiating between, is it just going to be stag and then George T. Stag? Is that? Yeah, I think so. I I think, you know, if you think about it, if you put your marketing hat on a little bit, you think, okay, like junior might be a little, I don't know. It's kind of, it doesn't have, it, it just seems a little. Childish. I'm or... trying to think of the word. Yeah, it really does. I mean, it just doesn't feel like a mature brand. And, and now you drop the word junior and you just, it's a stag and you're like, okay, well, if I see that on the shelves, it, it has a little more like, um, a little pr- pronunciation to it. It just happens like I you mean, drop the junior. I mean, it's going to sell no matter what, but. I mean, think about it. Uh, if, if your dad name was Ryan Cecil and everybody called you Ryan Jr. for the rest of your life, at some point you'd be saying, can I please drop the junior? Just call me Ryan. <laughs> I don't know. It's like King Griffey Jr. He probably never wanted to drop it. He. <laughs> that's true well it's a little bit different you know i i think if if your dad's in the spotlight you you gotta make sure you I, what was it i was listening to something earlier just because you know michael jordan's michael jordan and you had the same night michael jordan you know michael b jordan still became michael b jordan because he kept the b in there so at some point you have to stick there and, you know differentiate yourself from from anybody else that has the limelight in front of you yeah i mean I don't know. I mean, so does this make Stag Junior these bottles worth more? So that I guess I shouldn't open these. I got one that's unopened. Yeah, I, I, just hold on, probably for a year, and we'll see what happens. Are they going to be putting batch numbers gotta, on there now? Got a lot of bourbon too. Moving forward, no. So I don't think they. I don't think they've ever really put batch numbers on there. I think it's just been one of those things that the bourbon community has been. You know, they do what bourbon communities do best and just go crazy and understand. They they look at all of the proofs that have ever been released and they start putting them in chronological order and that's how it became batch numbers. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's all going to sell. So just, it's, <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Right? And we're talking about them again. So good job. Uh, PR firm at marketing and Buffalo yeah. trace. In Buffalo. Y'all trace. nailed it. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember really getting into bourbon in the early days, like 2014, 2015 around here for me. And I think it was hard to find stag junior back then. I feel like it was harder to find and stag remember, junior than stag back then it yeah. was like I, I i i totally agree and i remember i think it was traveling upwards to wisconsin or something like that or maybe in chicago area and i found a bunch of stags and i think i bought three or four of them uh jack yeah, stack juniors and and i was i was very happy because i couldn't find any in kentucky around louisville and surrounding areas so oh well times have changed yeah it's funny i think my first few bottles of stag junior were from out of state too and I don't even think I've ever gotten one in Kentucky. It's always been from out of state. <laughs> I think I think it was probably like two years ago. I had a store offer me. They're like, "Do you do you want a Stag Junior?" 
Uh, no, I'm good. I but, appreciate it. But if it, it was sure stag, else very happy. you have done it? Just stag? Of course. <laughs> oh, you mean like if, if it was not George T, but just said stag yeah. on it? Who knows? I might be a sucker for it. I wonder if they changed the bottle to too. Like instead of the squat bottle, kind of make it a bigger, you know, I you doubt it. it. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a whole packaging issue. I, I mean, I saw the TTB label. It looked relatively the same. It just... Missing is, the JR. <laughs> yeah, it's just missing two letters. <laughs> All right, let's got to keep going here. So the TTB has approved 179,600 new products in this calendar year, the last 12 months, sorry, not calendar year, the last 12 months through October 2021, which calls for an increase of around almost 16,000 new labels. And I'm not going to go into the, well, the beer was around 43,000, wine was 115,000, but spirits was 22,000 products that were approved over the last 12 months, which is a staggering 24% over last year versus it was only 8% in wine and 7% in beer. So you're seeing a, a big jump in spirits that are being improved through the TTB. And I think we talked about this maybe a few weeks ago. I think it was probably the last month uh, that these reports come out. And you're just going to continue seeing this trend upwards every single month. Yeah, what are all these new brands? It's like crazy. Uh, it's- well, I mean, it's just spirits. It's you know, It could be vodka, it could be gin, it can be whatever kind of crazy barrel finish they've got going on. Yeah. And I think we've also said before, we're starting to see that moment in time where you're starting to see a lot of craft distillers start coming online, a lot of four-year-old stuff that is about ready to be bottled. And so that's, I think, I think that's what we're going to see a lot of the the things start really jumping up. Yeah. Wade's going to be busy, you know, trolling. He's got (laughs) a lot of stuff to filter through. Well, I think this next article is even going to kind of feed into that a little bit because California winemakers are venturing into other premium beverages, showing that Napa Valley has more to offer than just its viticulture. So according to reports in the Napa Valley Register, winemakers from Treasury Wine Estates, David Arthur Vineyards, Daylight Wine and Spirits, and Ian J. Gallo have all successfully diversified their portfolio into other drinks categories, giving a rise that Napa's terroir is uh, more than just wine. So over in Sonoma, they have Daylight Wine and Spirits, and their co-founder, Andy Wall, has expanded beyond wine with a brand called Ammunition, which crosses into the bourbon and rye whiskey categories. And he described that after going to a lot of different wine dinners, people might start with wine, but they would end up drinking bourbon at the end of the night and also at the bars. So it was sort of like a progression. The Ammunition bourbon and rye whiskey are both finished in barrels that were used for their ammunition wines. And reportedly, Wall said they struck upon the idea one night after switching from Pinot to whiskey without cleansing the glass. And he noticed the potential to use this byproduct for an asset in whiskey production. He says, I noticed immediately how it changed the color of the whiskey and it was a bit more aromatic, revealing that he uses three to four year old barrels to give the whiskey a berry flavor. So I guess is that his first time ever seeing someone... Do a barrel finish. <laughs> yeah. This is brilliant. We're gonna do this. <laughs> this is this little brand called Angel's Envy. We never even heard of that before. <laughs> That's I don't even have words to describe that, but it it makes sense. I mean, because you know Napa and other wine regions have had some crazy weather, and you know, and it's so unpredictable. And they've the with droughts and fires and all the stuff California has to offer, but um. Whereas distilling is uh, <laughs> all the, all the good yeah. things. <laughs> Love that state, uh, but yeah, I mean, distilling is more predictable. It's probably could stabilize their you know business model, and I agree. I mean, I I like wine, but I can only drink it with dinner. I can't do it all night, so I'm all, I'd make that same progression. Now I've never done a whiskey finish in a Pinot glass, but maybe I'll try that this weekend. <laughs> I am. I'm almost 99% sure we have tried a bourbon finish in a Pinot barrel or oh, something yeah. of that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Wait, a Pinot, wait, Pinots wouldn't be in a barrel, would yeah. they? Would they? I don't, I don't know my wine. All wine's that's how, in a that's barrel. That's why I'm showing my, is it? Okay. Well, see, that's when I realized that I have no, oh yeah, you're right. Because we tried some, I think it was like the Thomas S. Moore Chardonnay finish and stuff like that. And yeah, I don't think those ones really hit home for me. But yeah, now that you say it, you're right. Yeah, I think I'm just Whitford an idiot. did uh, one in a Pinot at some point. Somebody's mm-hmm. done a Pinot Noir. If there's a barrel, if there's a finishing <laughs> yeah. barrel, someone's tried to do it. Yeah. You, you tell me any type of wood species that's out there 
and somebody's gonna make a barrel. I just out of love it. it that somebody put whiskey in a glass, a wine glass, and thought, I, "This is brilliant." <laughs> Let's. <laughs> <laughs> Why has anybody thought of this before? I mean, I've had tons of Mind ideas, blow. and then I get on Google and I'm like, "Oh, that's not a new idea." You know, <laughs> somebody's done that a thousand times. Oh, I kid, uh, I kid. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure uh, it's no. good. No. It was it was a funny it story. Is. Why do you think I included those quotes? It was only because I'm sure I'm sure the whiskey's great, but it, it was funny to say like, oh, we got this uh, this great <laughs> idea afterwards. And it's like, no, nah, it's it's been around for quite some time now, but that's okay. That's okay. That's all right. It's your new all idea. Right. It's a new idea to them. So c- kudos. Congratulations. Sure is. There we go. So let's go ahead. We'll we'll turn the tables here with some some good feel good news. Feel good news. So Jack Daniels Distillery and the Armed Services YMCA said that more than 1,700 junior enlisted service members and families will be headed home for the holidays to see their loved ones through their Operations Ride Home program. The program provides financial assistance to active duty and junior enlisted military and their families to travel from their base to their loved ones' homes across the country. And Jack Daniels kicked off this year's campaign with a $100,000 donation and is asking friends to visit OperationRideHome.com and contribute to help even more service members make it home. At, to this date, more than $2 million in overall donations have provided travel funding over the past 11 years. So That's awesome. You know, See, very happy. More good very news. Good. Stuff, stuff coming out of the bourbon community. I know. We got some more stuff here uh, towards the end, too. So hold, hold your tears back. We got, we got some more good stuff coming. But yet again, we have to talk about it because every single week, the Kentucky Distillers Association makes a name in This Week in Bourbon, and they're back once again. But this time, it's not inviting a new member to the KDA, but instead, they have announced that Chris Nolan of MMLNK Government Solutions is the recipient of this year's Espirit de Corps Award, which is for individuals who have gone above and beyond the call of duty to advance the mission of the KDA in Kentucky signature bourbon and spirits industry. So here's a little bit about Chris and kind of why he received this award. So Chris's leadership, he paved the way for passing of the landmark legislation that made Kentucky a model for spirit shipping and further modernized the state's pre-prohibition, or sorry, pro- prohibition era laws and policies, which are longtime barriers to growth for Kentucky distillers. So MMNLK Government Solutions, they are founded by the late W. Terry McBrayer, and they're a bipartisan government relations firm with decades of government relations and lobbying experience located in Frankfurt, which is the capital city of Kentucky. So uh, we actually had, I was actually, I've actually talked to Chris before. I reached out for him to come on the show about passing of House Bill uh, HB 14 or HB 415. And he he said, I don't want to come on, but I want to pass you off to somebody else. (laughs) And it was during COVID, the height of COVID, we released an episode, it was called Bonus, and it was talking about breaking down the three-tier system. And we had some people on to kind of talk about the legislation and stuff like that. So really kind of cool that we see some awards going out to people that are starting to break down some of these, some of these barriers that we've been talking about now for the past few years. Heck yeah. We need more, more people like him. (laughs) (laughs) He's going to start calling the Chris Nolan awards here soon. That's right. I'll get, we need to give some more out. Let's give some reasons to give some more out. (laughs) I'll, I'll fund for the trophies. We'll go to the trophy shop down the street. Maybe not that we'll just get medals. We'll do that. It's a lot easier. I like medals. Is it metal with a barrel on it or something? I don't know. Well, I got to get more creative than that, but we'll figure it out. So Copper Works Distilling is a craft distillery, tasting room, and retail store in the waterfront tourist district of downtown Seattle. But they are taking a new route to fundraising, and they're doing it through crowdsourcing on startengine.com. They said for their their demand for their highly acclaimed award-winning spirits uh, is starting to rise and they want to expand with a new tasting room and a new visitor center location and a new production facility. But here is what they offer for part of your investment. Investments are based on common shares with an average price around 53 cents per share that gets you equity into the company. Now, the minimum is a $250 investment. Now, of course, you get equity in the company with all these, but you get, it's like a little bit of a Kickstarter approach with it. So, with $250, you also get invited to a quarterly phone call and annual meeting. A $2,200 investment is a lifetime 10% discount on all pur- purchases. $5,000 gets you a lifetime tasting for you and up to three guests on their core line of products. $10,000 is for one week early access on special releases. $25,000, you get to spend a day with the distillers plus lunch or dinner with the leadership team. $50,000, you get to select a single barrel that will be sold to the public in their gift shop. And $100,000, 
actually gets you on their board of advisors. And to date, they have 710 investors through the site, through the site and they raise around 1.4 million. And the company has a valuation of $11.7 million. Wow. So interesting way to kind of raise money there. Does it break down the percent equity you get for those donations or no? Well, they're they're based in the common shares. Okay, I so, got you. you know, yeah, so $100,000 at 53 cents a share is basically... Uh, you know, how many shares the company has, and that's the equity that you have in the company. It's kind of what it based off of. It's it's kind of like going public, but not going public, if that makes any sort of sense. Like there's only so many shares that, that kind of go around. So interesting. Well, congratulations them. It when you start sounds like that's not gonna work. And then you said they raised one point four million dollars. I was like, well, it's very, very good. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, there was this story of somebody doing something like that a few years ago. If anybody remembers Jim Rutledge. Uh, he he tried raising some money for his venture and that didn't work out so well. But so far they raised 1.4. I think Jim's was much higher bar. I think it was in the tens of millions of dollars it was trying to raise and that just, it just wasn't going to happen. But, but they're going to need more hey. than 1.4. That doesn't get you very far in uh, the distilling world. No, nope. It sure does not. Uh, 1.4 gets us uh, the amount of barrels that we need for one year. And, and we, don't want to, we don't even have it, still. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's, that's they're talking about uh, new gift shops and production facility and all this other kind of stuff. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna need to raise more than 1.4. But they are, this is their second round of raising that they're going through right now. So, hey, if you want to get a little bit of equity in a company and kind of just have some sort of connection to it, go and check it out. It was on startengine.com. Very cool. So we know that we're heading to the, the season where gifting is always very important to figure out what you're going to get that special someone in your life. But alcohol retailers amidst the holidays, they kind of need to know exactly what's going to happen. So since the start of the pandemic and, of course, gifting bottles of wine and liquor on all occasions, this has been around for a while, but now it's starting to boom. And even with gathering and traveling restrictions have loosened, the trend doesn't appear to be slowing down, which means retailers should be prepared for the busiest holiday season yet. In 2021 to date, 10% share of the orders that have gone through Drizzly have been gifts. And in this December, it's likely that number will at least double, if not go more. Back in December 2020, gift orders accounted for 20% shares of all total orders. In last December, champagne, followed by red wine, led the pack for gifts, though spirits, especially bourbon and scotch, weren't that far behind. Scotch is notoriously popular as the holiday beverage, especially for corporate gifts. And whiskey accounted for 26% share of gift orders over the last 12 months. While bourbon leads overall whiskey sales, gifters have been slightly more keen to opt for scotch. Together, scotch and bourbon have comprised 73% of all whiskey gift orders this past year. Now, in recent years, many consumers have shifted away from entry-level options towards going towards more high-end, such like single malt scotch whiskeys. And you can expect premium scotch whiskeys like the Macallan Double Cask 12 Years or Lagavulin 16-Year Islay Single Malt to be more frequently purchased items, alongside classic consumer favorites like Johnny Walker Blue and other whiskey styles like Angel's Envy Kentucky Straight Bourbon and Hibiki Japanese Harmony. Those all made the top 10 gifted whiskey list for the several years in a row and are poised to be popular as well. This is I'm really not surprised about Angel's Envy. Yeah, this is when you see like uh everything that's in those glass cases at all the liquor stores that doesn't move all year and then they uh, then they it just, just disappear and you're like who buys those then Christmas gifts. <laughs> it's that and this is also the time of the year. I don't know if I've seen any this year yet, but you typically have those those new retail packages come yeah. out that has a bottle and usually like one or two rocks glasses in it and it's usually just the standard stuff like Woodford or something like that. But hey, it looks good and people buy it for, for gifts. Yeah. What are you getting me this year, Kenny? Oh, it's a secret. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna reveal it through here. I want to give you a surprise. I already got yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's a clock yeah. radio. <laughs> Mr. Bourbon clock radio. <laughs> yes, yes. Need something that says it on there. I it's always funny when you when we talk about gifts. I, I think I had to have the conversation with my parents a few years ago. I just said, just don't worry about getting me anything with bourbon on it. I've I've got too much stuff. I really appreciate it. There's no bottle you can get me. I don't need another barrel head. Uh, it's it's overflowing. Yeah, but I don't need it's, another it's, it's ice made cube it, thing. I don't need. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You just, yeah, ice molds and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think I've made it hard for them because they know I love bourbon, but it's one of those things that I think it's also when you get older in life, and I, and I think my wife's probably the worst culprit of it too. 
I'll have an idea. I want to go get her or something. And then she just goes out and buys it herself. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. Like I was going to get you that. And you know, if, you, if you're old enough and you have money, just go buy it. You'd be happy now. Why you don't have to wait? Yeah. I hate presents. I'm like, don't give me anything, but everybody does. And then I have to get them some. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no, I love, I love giving, but I hate getting stuff. It's it, like, I have everything. I don't need anything, you know, but we'll, we'll make a pact right now. We, we just don't get each other gifts and then we're, we're both All happy. Right, I'll take mine back then. then. <laughs> Here, here's the gift. We each get to go each other's bourbon cellar and we get to choose one bottle to open from somebody else's cellar. How about that? All right. Fair enough. <laughs> you're already eyeing some dusties or something over here oh, good well we're going to talk about drizzly some more here too so drizzly has announced that they have a collaboration with 7-eleven that will enable the platform to deliver alcohol in under 60 minutes to more than 1200 or sorry from, from more than 1200 7-eleven stores with the plans to expand around 2000 stores in the next upcoming months so there's going to be select 7-eleven select 7-eleven man that's a tongue twister there Across Arizona, California, Connecticut, Florida, Illinois, Missouri, Ohio, Oregon, Texas, Virginia, and Washington, and they will offer delivery from Drizzly. And this move was made following a successful pilot program of around 190 stores. This partnership will increase Drizzly's retailer count to more than 5,500 locations nationwide. And Drizzly, of course, was acquired earlier this year by Uber for $1.1 billion. That's billion with a B. That's B as in bourbon. Yeah, I knew as soon as Uber started getting involved, they were going to do something to start expanding that. So 7-Eleven makes Scale sense. Fast. Last week, week before, there's a lot of convenience stores, chains, grocery kind of people getting into the delivery alcohol space, convenience factor. So that's a good good move on for Drizzly. I like Drizzly. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Yeah, I know. We, we had him on the podcast at one point. It was cool. Kind of talked to the CEO before they got bought out. Now so he won't answer our calls. I don't think we'll get him on again. Yeah, and he doesn't answer those calls anymore. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Our, our last kind of like feel-good story for the night. So to continue the three-year Friendsgiving tradition, Sonoma Couture and Woodford Reserve announced a new 50000 joint donation to No Kid Hungry, a national campaign dedicated to ending childhood hunger. This donation by Brown Foreman it helps provide around 500,000 meals to kids facing food insecurity in the United States. Sonoma Couture and Woodford Reserve first partnered with No Kid Hungry back in July of 2018, and they've since donated a total of $200,000 to the campaign, and they are inviting consumers to join in donating to No Kids Hungry by texting FRIENDS, F-R-I-E-N-D-S, to 68405. Very cool. So there there, and there's a yep. bourbon finished in wine barrel, for, you know, doing some charity. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back around, doesn't yep. it? All right, so here is this last last story. It's a fun one because we've all seen the types of stories of like, is alcohol good for you? Is it bad for you? Is it good for you? It's bad for you. Do you eat the yolk? Do you not eat the yolk? Are the egg whites good? Carbs but are good. Carbs are age, bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so as you age, staying on top of your health usually involves staying active or maintaining a healthy diet and dropping bad, bad habits like smoking. And of course, studies have gone back and forth, whether it's beneficial or harmful in some way for alcohol. But now a new study has added evidence that seniors aged 70 and older could lower their death risk by having a small number of alcoholic drinks each week. The latest study was conducted by researchers at Monash University in Melbourne, Australia, and it was published in the European Journal of Preventative Cardiology on October 28th. And it set out to fill the gaps left by numerous other studies focusing on the effect of alcohol as you get older. The team gathered more than 18,000 seniors with an average age of 74 that were described as healthy with no history of physical disability, heart disease, or dementia. And researchers found that nearly 20% of the participants didn't drink any alcohol at all during each week, whereas around 37% drink 1 to 50 grams, or which the equivalent is about three drinks per week. Around 20% consumed 50 to 100 grams, or around three and a half to seven drinks per week. And around 15% imbibed a weekly equivalent of 7 to 10 drinks consisting of 101 to 150 grams. And then you had your uh, other people that would probably, somebody like me would fall into of the 150 grams or more the per lush. week, which is equivalent to having the, lush yes, the lushes, the lushes, which is around 9%. And now the team then followed up with the participants for close to five years to assess results for that group who drink. And they, they found out that the group who drinks three and a half to seven drinks per week had a lower risk of death than all other groups considered in the study. However, those in the groups that consumed basically anywhere from 51 to over 150 grams 
were all found to be a lower risk of cardiovascular disease than the group that reported drinking no alcohol whatsoever. There you go. Feather in the cap for team booze. (laughs) (laughs) Strike one, put a tally up for the good guys. (laughs) Yeah, it's... These studies for one way or the other, it's like, you can spin numbers however you want. And it's like, okay, yes, there they say they're not counter or everybody's on a somewhat equal healthy playing field. And you're like, no, they're not. Everybody's genes are different. Everybody's eating different. You know, some people are huffing cigs. Some people are not, you know, it's like. (laughs) I ate a pound of bacon every day. Okay. How much, you know, processed mac and cheese is the one group eating, you know, versus the (laughs) other who's having, I don't know, but it's a good, good for alcohol anyways. Team alcohol. Yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna read the data in our favor. That's how right. it's gonna. That's be. all I do. Whenever something I do is like positive, I'm like, yep, see, confirmation bias. <laughs> it's like, how can we spin this? All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a quick break. We're gonna hear a word from our partners, and we'll be back with some bourbon release news. If you're anything like me, then you can't get enough about bourbon. And that's why I'm a subscriber to Bourbon Plus magazine. Bourbon Plus is a quarterly publication that tells the stories from the heart of bourbon. The farmers who grow the grain, the distillers who labor over the process, and the people like you and me who raise their glasses to celebrate it all. Subscribe to Bourbon Plus magazine today at bourbonplus.com, that's P-L-U-S dot com, and use code PURSUIT at checkout for $5 off your subscription. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point-of-sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. Shopify's point-of-sale is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. And with Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. And get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's point of sale Go Mobile device for a battle tested solution. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash bourbon, all lowercase, and go to shopify.com slash bourbon to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash bourbon. And we're back with some more This Week in Bourbon, but now we're going to hit that segment of the show where we dive into what's hitting the shelves and what do you need to know about bourbon release news and whether it's uh, some stuff you want to chase after or some stuff that you just want to say, hey, uh, hey, mom, I, I heard about this new bourbon on, on this podcast by Bourbon Pursuit. I want you to go get me one of these bottles. So there we go. Coming back around to the Christmas gift ideas here. Let's hear them. So... Th- Let's do it. So the first one is from New Holland Spirits, which is also part of New Holland Brewery, if you know about Dragon's Milk and stuff like that. They are going to officially release Zeppelin Bend 10-Year on November 19th. It's a small batch, single malt whiskey finish and Australian sherry casks. And this is uh, remarkable because New Holland refabricated its Prohibition era pot still in about 10 years ago just for this. So it, their barrels rested, rested oh, sorry, comfortably nestled in the dark and quiet corners of their rickhouse those few precious barrels rested without restriction for 10 long years and waiting for this celebrated release and then it spent a six-month finish in imported sherry casks it has a 96.5 proof and it will be exclusively available at the new holland retail locations and available while supplies last Hmm. interesting it tasted so good after 10 years they put in a sherry cask (laughs) (laughs) you know it's 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 always one of those things, but I mean that's that's the thing about scotch and other. That's true. Ones. Yeah, I mean when you when you think about that, it's you. What are the kind of scotches that we like? Uh, sherry, sherry yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. So I think it's just part of the the culture. Maybe that's just what it is. I mean, I think there's some people that have a have a knack. You have a taste for those kind of single malts, but for the vast majority, especially for bourbon consumers, you know, make it sweet. Makes it. Heck yeah, I like sweet. 
PX Sherry for mm-hmm. Scotch. That's the only thing that I can palate. <laughs> no peat. No, no peat. Get the peat out of here. <laughs> so Castle and Key, they've been our views quite often, I think, in the past few weeks, but they are now officially launching a series of Restoration Rye single barrels that will be released every Thursday and Sunday beginning now through September. Through, sorry, through Sunday, December 12th, except for, of course, for the next week, the week of Thanksgiving. The single barrels will be available at the distillery for $65, and Castle and & Key will release two single barrel bottles uh, called Black and Gold. Restoration Rye single barrel black labels were picked and identified as single barrel releases by the Castle & Key team, and they will be sold in their boiler room on site. And the Restoration Rye Gold Labels will be selected by retailers, restaurants, and enthusiast groups throughout the key markets where Castle and Key products are sold. So if we want to get one, we better better give them a call. Can you drive me down there? Sure. Why not? I love Castle. I do like the place. I, just, I love I love that place. I mean, I, I don't know how many times we can sing the praises of what an awesome place it is to go visit, especially for anybody that's just a really, really into bourbon. Let's take a field trip. Maybe we'll get a single barrel. Uh, we, <laughs> that, that'll be our gift to show it. up. <laughs> you get a black. We'll I'll just get show a up. Knock on the door. That's perfect. That's perfect. We'll. Uh, I mean, I'm sure we'll come up with some kind of sweet label with it. I mean, black and gold. Like they look good. Yeah, look good. What was that? Black and yellow. Black and yellow. I don't know what that song was, but I'm sure we could figure out something. Steeler. No, Steeler's black and yellow, not black and gold. Somebody's black and gold. It, it's, some team is. It. It's it's black and yellow. Well, I mean, it's black and gold, black and yellow. I mean, it's basically the Steelers, isn't it? No, Saints is black and gold. We'll do the Saints. Okay, sounds good. Not a, not a Steelers fan. I don't know. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not a big NFL fan in general. I didn't even get invited to any uh, fantasy leagues this year. So that that shows you how much either people don't like me or how much I don't pay attention to it. You're not that guy that just leaves their bench in, uh, <laughs> when somebody has a bye week, just leaves it empty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I typically remember to get to it on Wednesday, maybe maybe Thursday before the, the following week. So I miss all the waiver wires or whatever. And I'm usually the one that people are trying to trade with me and saying, you should do this. This is a really good trade. And I'm like, this is like my best player. I don't well, think they're, this is a they're good trade. They're to play you to get a win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even if I get the first round draft, I ended up always inevitably screwing it up. It's just... It's just the luck of it. But I'm always happy to pay the donation to have friends for a football season. Oh, it's it's totally worth the investment because it makes the whole season like entertaining. Otherwise, it sucks. <laughs> You're like, I have no interest in any of these games if, if I don't have like money on it. It's is that what it's that gets your uh, get your gears going? Is you got to have some money on some stuff? Yeah, that's sad. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sure there's a lot of other gamblers out there that feel your pain. Be in that. 70 year old lush and gambler demographic, but I'll live longer. Hey, but you're gonna live longer, you know, and it's it's just can be more football seasons for you to enjoy. That's right. <laughs> Better keep drinking. All right. So, Treaty Oak Ghost Hill, Texas Bourbon, number 1767. That was that was literally the release of it. So, it was that many words long. So, this was aged two years and three months in first use American white oak barrels and then transferred into used Treaty Oak Barrel Reserve rum casks for six months. It will have 115 proof and just around 100 bottles. And this will be available soon. Sales will begin on Black Friday, November 26th, and it will be a limit of two bottles per person. So, only 50 people can buy them. Oh. If, if, that's what, if that's what they're going for, I mean, it's a, it's a quick way to go out if you only have. 100 bottles and two bottles per people, it, it's going to create some demand right away. I'll buy it if Whiskey sure Fires they, is sure. there singing or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, fanboys and fangirls out there that like Treaty Oak. And so they'll Treaty Oak, sell they, no time. If I'm not, they were doing, I don't, is it their own distillate now? Because they were MGP, but. I mean, two years and three months, I would hope yeah, it's Yeah, that's probably theirs now. I'd, yeah, I, I would venture. I so. blinked down the spec. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Let's go on with the uh, another Texas bourbon while we're at it. So, Maverick Whiskey is releasing its limited edition Samuel Maverick Barrel Proof Straight Bourbon Whiskey, which is a certified Texas whiskey that's produced in the Lone Star State. The Samuel Maverick Barrel Proof Straight Bourbon Whiskey is distilled from a mash of seventy-two percent Texas grown corn, eighteen percent rye, and ten percent malted barley. Aged minimum of two years in new charred white oak. 
and the Texas Barrel Proof. It's too much. It's non-chill filtered, bottled at Barrel Proof, which will be 114 proof. And it is now available in the Maverick Whiskey Distillery and select retailers across Texas. A lot of Texas. And I'll tell you what, I yeah, I was to say the Texas market is going to blow up. It's either going to blow up or get flooded. And I don't know what what it's going to be, but man, alive. It, I, I feel like, actually, I think we talked to somebody from Texas not too long ago. And I said, what what is it about all these Texas bourbons that have been coming out? Is it just like a hometown pride thing? It's, you know, everything's, you know, everything's bigger in Texas and you want to help support Texas. Because don't be wrong, we've had some Texas whiskeys and they still don't outshine pretty much everything else that you can get from Kentucky and Indiana and other states. Yeah, I think it's probably own your own in your own yard or having something to hang your hat on or trying to say like Texas is better. You know, like mm-hmm. Indiana's trying to do that to Kentucky forever and they're close with MGP, but not quite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and don't get me wrong, we've had a lot of good Texas bourbons oh, yeah. and Texas whiskeys before. For sure. So we yeah, don't don't say that, but just know that, you know, we've we've also had quite a lot of ones that it's it's what you would expect. I mean, that's the it's younger, it's usually in smaller barrels and with the the climate the way it is, it just doesn't have that same it's just different. It's their style, you know. Yeah. Each state has their own style. That's true. You know. That's true. You could look at it like that. I mean, if you think of like old western films, I mean, that, that reminds me of like, ah, hey, drinking Texas whiskey. Like slam it down, that sort of thing. I'm going to go over and get some Colorado. And then <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Come on over there. That's that's quite the hike, but I'm sure they'll yeah. get there. You're going to die die dysentery on the way. That's an Oregon Trail joke for all you out there. So let's move on to a little something about Heaven's Door. So they are collaborating with MGM Resorts on an exclusive limited edition bourbon called the 777 Blend. And of course, this name nods to the mystique surrounding the number seven, or maybe triple seven, I'll just say triple seven in the gaming community. But it also describes the blend within. It's crafted from a blend of three seven-year-old whiskeys, a brand new weeded bourbon, a low rye bourbon, and a straight rye whiskey. It's bottled at 93.6 proof, and this custom blend is only available at MGM Resorts in Las Vegas, including properties like the Bellagio, Aria, and Nomad in Las Vegas, and the MGM National Harbor in Maryland. And I know Ryan, who we've talked to before, uh, he had a big hand in this as well. So interesting to kind of see that. I think it's really cool to... I did not have a hand in this. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, meant, I meant Ryan from Heaven's Door, their, their master blender over there. And it's like, do you know something I don't? <laughs> I think it's really cool to see a collaboration like this. And it, it's honestly, it's, it's usually like this. I, I see it as a big win for the, for the bourbon, uh, bourbon brand. I know I've been to either as the Bellagio or somewhere else and they had Buffalo Trace picks and stuff like that. And it was fantastic. But when you can come up with this, that's a bespoke blend just for the, uh, just for the, the casino, I, I think it's a huge win for, for somebody like them and having that sort of presence at with so many people that come through Vegas and stuff like that too. Oh yeah. Anything to make it more unique or differentiate yourself. Yeah. That's easy sell for uh tourists that are happy to be there and, or not happy because they just lost all their money. So they're going to try to spend it on whiskey. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even in the the press release for it, it said, book your flights now because, it, you know, Bob Dylan was all this. And they also talked about how Bob Dylan also has some other connection to MGM. I guess there's some sort of archway or some art exhibit that he pays homage to him as well. But uh, for the most part, I just pulled out the bits and pieces about bourbon because I'm sure that's what most people here care about. <laughs> that's all us to care about, really. So I, I know the audience. I know the audience. All right, let's go ahead. Our last headline for the night, Old Elk Distillery recently unveiled a new limited edition expression called the Old Elk Infinity Blend. And this is created by master distiller Greg Metz, who you've heard on the podcast before. And this blend is made of 60% six-year-old, six-year-old elk blended, I was about to say old, old elk, old elk blended trait bourbon, 24% of a 12-year-old Kentucky vintage and 16% of an 11-year-old Kentucky. The Infinity Blend is a nod to the current whiskey enthusiasts creating their own Infinity bottles. 
Old Elk Distillery plans to use this blend for future releases, and the process will continue annually. However, Greg actually went on record and said that this is his best blend yet. The Old Elk Infinity Blend will be a national limited release, priced at $150 per bottle. Usually not a fan of hyperbole, but Greg's had such a long career. I mean, that's something... It's got to be good then, right? Well, I mean, and he's mostly been on the distilling side for most of his career. I mean, he was he was the master distiller at MGP for a very, very long time. Uh, he he went off and became the master distiller for Old Elk and really kind of set them on a pretty good path, That and that's what you see today. A lot of their stuff is contract distilled in MGP based on their specifications, and now he's sort of going into this, this next realm of kind of becoming known as a blender, but... It, if I remember correctly, he, he he did have his own bottle or brand one time when he was at MGP. I think it was called like Met Select or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. I don't it was think Met I ever Select. had it, but I remember it. I remember it being out there. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, uh, some of our favorite whiskeys hand-selected by Master Distiller Greg Metz to produce an exceptionally well-balanced bourbon. He, so. d- he didn't say that those were his best blend ever, was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> On not that. back then. <laughs> So yeah, pick and choose your your time. It's and your interesting they have uh, the twelve year Kentucky in there. I thought so too. You know, it's it's one of those things that you know Kentucky holds a pretty prominent name when it comes to um, you know whiskey in general. And I think when you have when you can say you've got you know some twelve and eleven year old stock in there, which if anybody doesn't know, it's pretty much hard to come by right now. It'd be interesting. I I actually think it's interesting the fact that they had these barrels sitting around or where did they get them from? Because that I know. was Give me, never, never need anything. your broker. Of, old elk. <laughs> well, it's that and it, was, it was never really anything on their roadmap that I remember ever talking to them about where they were talking about continually going the, down the route of, okay, we're going to distill some, you know, in Colorado, but we are powerhouse is going to be an MGP at no point. Was it, Oh, we're going to go and source all this stuff to then create something down the road. I mean, who knows? Maybe they thought about buying these years ago and they just took a U-turn and said, we'll just forget about these barrels and figure out what to do with them one day. But now, now we're here. Yeah, I'm excited to try. This sounds pretty good, really. Yeah, for sure. Well, Ryan, I'll tell you what, that's going to do it for this week in bourbon. We hit a lot of good topics tonight. And as I mentioned, I hope that we're going to have some more stuff to talk about next week because it's going to be a short week next week. Yeah, Thanksgiving's coming up. One of my favorite holidays of the year. Mm-hmm. Get your turkey your turkey news ready. <laughs> Start brining your <laughs> birds early. Make sure they're nice and juicy for everybody. It'll be the only week Campari comes out with turkey news. Well, talk about Russell's. <laughs> <laughs> got to have something. Why We got to stay in the news somehow. I feel like there's never any news out of there. Out of wild turkey? Uh, yeah. It happens sometimes, but they only come out with a... But they had wild turkey one... That was announced a long time ago, the Russell Reserve 13, and that's probably about it for all of 2021. But heck, each of those releases have been, at least from what I've heard, because I haven't tried them, have been pretty solid. Oh, I know. It's always good. It doesn't even need news. (laughs) Kind of like Buffalo Trace. I know, but they still do it. We're still going to talk about them anyway. (laughs) That's right. All right. So that wraps it up for another edition of This Week in Bourbon. Cheers, everybody, and make sure you follow and subscribe us everywhere, uh, Yeah, as in all the podcasts, as well as on all the social channels. But with that, cheers, y'all, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>